Welcome to session 12. Last time we were together, we learned how we can generate electricity through an electromagnetic device. We kind of picked a configuration, uh, one of many, uh, that was basically the commutator rotor with the stationary magnetic field produced by permanent magnets. And that's what's inside this. Uh, generator here. Now when I cranked that for you last time I told you you know the more lights I turn on the harder it is to turn but you can't really experience that directly. Now when I do these demonstrations in middle schools I let the, the students turn the crank and flip the switches on themselves and they can tell how much harder it is to turn the crank and generate electricity, the more electricity they generate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure for you the force it takes to turn this wheel, depending on whether there's any lights on at all, one bank, two banks, or three banks. And we'll graph them on here and kind of get an idea of what the relationships are. Okay? So I'm going to tie this, uh, wind this cord on here with a scale. It's a digital scale. Let's turn it on and ready to go. And let's let's go to a different camera though. This one here. So you can see everything close up. All right. What I'm going to try to do in order to be consistent is I'm going to try to generate somewhere between 9 and 10 volts for every situation. And, and so everything will be kind of uh, normalized. Now, because I'm human, I am not going to be able to do that perfectly. <laughs> OK, here we go. We're going to try to do 10, 10 volts. I think I overshot it. Yeah, I'm over a little bit, but we'll just use it anyway. There's 11.5. That's a little high. I pulled on it a little bit too hard. So let's put the 11 and a half there, first button. Now let's flip on one bank of lights, wind the, uh, the cord back on here. And let's go back to 10 volts again. And I've got 17, 17 pounds at one bank of light. 17 is about there. There's 15. That's about 17. And now let's wind this up. This time we want to do two banks. I want to go to nine and a half to ten volts. Okay. There's 22, 22.75. We're going to make that a 23. 23 is about there. Okay. And I seem to be going more than my 10 volts, but so I'm going to try to do that with this one too, just a little bit above the 10 volts. Okay, there's 28.65, we'll call that 29, close enough. There's 30, so we're just down here. Okay, let's move those buttons. 
Now these are for another measurement we're going to make in a moment. So let's take a look at uh, what we have here. Came out pretty good. <laughs> I'm amazed. So let's mark that with uh, a pen here. Rather straight line. And uh, now what I'd like to do is sort of repeat the experiment, only I'm just going to crank it this time. And uh, we want to look at the amps when I get to about 9.5, 10 volts. First, there are no lights connected. The switches are all, whoops, take this off. So the switches are all off at 10 volts. Obviously, there's no amperage because there's nothing in the circuit. So I'm going to take one of these buttons here and put it at zero amps. Don't worry about this scale now. We're using this scale, the amperage scale. Zero uh, lights are on, and it's zero amps. Now let's turn the first bank of lights on, go up to nine and a half, ten volts. We have one amp. Okay, We're at one amp. So one amp at with one bank of lights on. Turn on two. Get up to about. 10 volts, 2 amps. There we go. And finally, 3 banks of lights. Get it up to 10 volts, 3 amps. 3 amps, 3 banks of lights. Again, we're getting a nice straight line. So Look at our relationship. It's nice and linear. Now we have we start up here kind of high because of friction. But then once we start flowing electricity, it's proportional to how many banks of lights we have on. And so is the amperage. And it shows you that as I increase the amperage, it's harder to turn. So the more electricity that flows, the harder it is for me to turn the generator. Let's take a look at why it's hard to turn it, in addition to the fact that conservation of energy says, I need to put more in if I'm going to get more out. OK? So I've got a magnet here. And uh, here's the North Pole, South Pole. So there's a magnetic field straight down. And I'm going to move this coil of wire with a little bulb on it. The bulb's not going to light. This is a thought experiment, OK? It just shows you that the coil of wire has continuity in it. So as we move the wire through the magnetic field in that direction, in that direction, all the electrons that are in this wire are going to experience a force, aren't they? When electrons move through a magnetic field, they experience a force. And that force is defined by the second left-hand rule. So when those electrons are going that way, through a magnetic field that way, they experience a force in that direction. That means all the electrons that are going through here in this part of the wire are being pushed that way. Now, if the light bulb weren't there and the two ends of the wire weren't touching, nothing would happen. We would be done with the thought experiment. However, the bulb is there, which means electrons will flow in the circuit. So as I'm doing this, there are electrons flowing. 
they are going in that direction through the magnetic field. And you know when electrons go that way through a magnetic field that's that way, they experience a force in that direction. Well, they're trapped in the wire, aren't they? The electrons are in the wire. I'm pushing it this way. There's a force on the electrons that way. So there's an opposing force when I generate electricity. That's why it's hard to turn the generator. It's this combination. It's the Lorentz force being applied twice. So you can either look at it that way or you can just say, well, it's just conservation of energy. I have to work at producing electricity. But it's kind of nice to know where those forces come from, which is applying the Lorentz force twice. So I hope you enjoyed this session. In our last session for part one, we are going to take a look at something called regenerative braking. And that's where we use a device, the same device, you can call it a generator or a motor, where depending on what we want it to do, it switches from being a generator to a motor to recover energy, the kinetic energy of a vehicle. Electric trains have been doing that for over a hundred years. Now that we're building electric cars and hybrid cars, we are using that kind of technology in order to recover the kinetic energy of a vehicle as it comes to a stop sign or a red light or going downhill. We get that energy back and we can use it later. So thanks for coming and I'll see you next time.